Anybody here have any prayer requests? If not, we have we have uh, a couple here from some of y'all may know Wild Bill Lewis. Well, uh, he's asked for prayer for his wife Katie. Uh, she's in uh, for uh, stage cancer, and uh, we want to lift up her her in prayer and, and Bill. And then Wendell Penny has had a stroke. And they, uh, he's a team driver with uh, Merrill's stroke. And I uh, want to lift him up in prayer. And uh, let us pray now. Father God, we come to you today just to thank you for this opportunity to come to you, Lord. And we know that you're in control and that you have this all. Under, under your hand, and and all, and that you always turn whatever it is into good, Lord. And we just have to be patient and let you work. And we ask for for healing of Katie. If not, we ask that your will be done, and also with Bill and his stroke and all. And we know you're gonna uh, heal them in one way or the other, Lord. And we just we just prepared for you to do the mighty work that you're going to do for, for them and through them, Lord. And we just, we just thank you that we can come to you and ask for that, Lord. And we just come to you with everything else that's going on in this wild and wicked world, Lord. We know that you are in control of that and that you're going to work it out for the good. You've done it for Israel over the years, of your chosen people. And you'll do it again for them, Lord, and for, for us and all. And it's just a matter of us supporting your people and and being the, being the light in the world, Lord. The darkness cannot overcome the light, Lord. So what we need to do is for you to give us the strength for our light to shine brighter and brighter. And as they as they come for us, that, that we know that we have already won the battles but through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord. And we just we just thank you all. Lord, we just lift you up and give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, I was going to give one scripture, and the Lord gave me another scripture. So and this is kind of my favorite scripture, Second Chronicles. Uh, 7 14, but I want to go to 13. And it says, If I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and then it says, If the Lord does such things, it will be because of sin. Sin is what's taken our world over today. It's sin. It's you know, way long time ago in the Garden of Eden, Satan, well, before the Garden of Eden, Satan wanted to build his throne above God. He wanted to be the God, you know, he wanted to be God. He wanted to be just like, he wanted to be ahead of God. And sin has been in this world ever since uh, Satan got uh, Adam and Eve to sin in the Garden of Eden. But you know what? And then it says, this is, what I, this is my favorite scripture, and I quote this all the time. I can quote it by heart, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, if my people who are called by my name, that's believers. Are you a believer today? If you're a believer, then you're called by God's name. Shall humble themselves, humble, and pray, and seek my face. The prayer of repentance. That's what we need today. We need repentance. It's, repentance is supposed to start at the house of God. Repent, the Bible says that repentance starts at the heart of God. And there's not a, not a night goes by that I don't ask God to forgive me my sins. 
I know there's sins that we do that we don't even realize we do. We don't realize a lot of times that we're sinning things, you know, we might say something and <clears throat> mean it in a joking way that might hurt somebody else we don't know. But, you know, I'm kind of bad about that, saying things that kind of, and I don't mean it to come out the way it does, but it comes out a different way. But think about that. We need to repent. And it says, and turn from our wicked ways. So many times I've heard this scripture and they leave that part out by like turning from our wicked ways. They leave it out. They don't even say that. And it, it, which proclaims the mantra of true repentance. Repentance. We've got to have true repentance. We've got to be forgiven. We've got to be sorry for our sins. Repent. And don't go back. True repentance is being forgiven. And don't go back to the same sin over and over and over again and over again. That is true repentance. And they said, then I will hear from heaven. Think about that. Hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and heal their land. If this isn't a day today that we need our sin, I mean, our land healed, it is today, you know. From the White House to the, you know, to the kindergarten. We need our sins forgiven today. And that's the whole thing. We need to humble ourselves and pray, seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways, and then we'll hear from heaven. And then I will heal your land, you know. And that's just about all I've got to share. I'm not a very long-winded person. But, you know, but if I can, if, if it's okay, if I can take liberty and go back to what I was going to do at the beginning, is Psalms 91. Chaplain Chris, Chaplain Chris Tackett taught me this a long time ago. And she just, she's gone up to heaven. She's probably up there telling Jesus what she do. <laughs> but, but anyway, you know, she was just a dynamic person in my life. And I got the privilege of working with Chaplain Chris for six years. And, you know, she taught me a lot of things. This is protection. I think, like I said, I can quote it by heart. But just bear with me. I'll find it. But I guess why? I'll have Lester find it for me, but um, Psalms 91. Yeah, but I want to kind of give a little uh, brief testimony. You know, see, quite a few years ago, me and my late husband was working here, or we was living here, we was in the ministry here, and we went, we was coming back home from uh, the Road Ranger in Springfield, Illinois, so we had a mobile chapel up there, and we got down to the stop sign, and it was four-way stop in Hillsboro, and the guy come across the thing, and, well, he told about my little Ford Torres, and I got my eye hurt. Well, I know it's going to be healed. I know God's going to heal it because I was working for him when I got hurt. But I'm having a lot of trouble in my eyes, but I know God's going to heal him. You know, I know he is. And so I want to share this. This is protection. And, you know, I hear a lot of people, I listen to, you know, I'm not much one to jump in into all the, you know, talking a bunch of stuff. But when God says to say something, I say it. But, you know, I hear people talking about things. They're afraid to go to Walmart because they might get blown away. They're afraid to go here. They're afraid to go there. Fear. The devil has got us gripped with fear, and we need to get rid of that fear. We need to change it for faith. Like the old girl says, the devil knocked at the door, and she sent the faith to the door. That's what we need to do. We need to send faith to the door. You know, but this is Psalms 91. Now, listen to this. It says, he that dwells in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, I think of a shadow when the sun comes up and it, it puts a shadow out there. And that's what we're going to work on. You know, in the shadow of the Almighty. And it says, you know, I'm just like, you know, cry with me. I'm having trouble with my eyes. And it says, I will say the Lord. He is my refuge. Is he your refuge driver? And other people listen to this. Is he your really your refuge? And your fortress? A fortress is a big old I'm like, I'm not too, you know, but it's a big old place. They build up like where you're protected and stuff. Well, he is our fortress. He's our protector. My God, in him I will trust. You know, one driver was in here. He says, you know, we use faith. We don't even know it. He said, we turn the key on. And the faith is going to the truck or car is going to start. We turn, you know, we go to the microwave, push a button, and think it's going to start. Or anything. Light, light switch, you turn the light switch on. But how much do we really trust in God? And Chaplain Chris taught me, this is a protection. Think about this. Surely he should deliver you from the snare and from the fowl and from the noisy pestilence. And he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you, be, if you trust, and you shall be his shield and your buckler. You know, a long time ago, a truck, a lady truck driver was, I think, coming to one of the mobile chapels, me and my late husband was in. And she was telling about how she pulled into a parking space. You drive a different way to this. How she pulled into a parking place, 
And this guy jumped out and just pestled her out and cut her all things. And she thought, oh, I forgot my purse. So she had to go back to the thing to get her purse. She went back and he did that all. But she, you know, she knew how to be in that secret place because she didn't say nothing to him. She didn't argue with him. She didn't say a word to him. She just got her stuff and went on to the truck stop. So she was, to me, she was dwelling in that secret place of the Most High, you know. And it said, and he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. Wait, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Put on the whole armor of God, you know. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, or the arrows that fly by day. See, we don't have to be afraid. We do not have to be afraid. And sometimes I kind of get myself like that. I kind of get ready to think, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. I had to do that after my husband passed away. He says, you're, you're, you're used to someone being in a house or being somewhere, and there's a lot of widows and or people that's lost their houses and stuff. But you go home, and every little noise you hear, but you don't hear that noise when someone's with you. And, but well, I've had trouble with people getting around the windows and things like that. But I had to quote that scripture, and I'm so sorry I can't remember where it's found. But, but he will, you know, but he did. He took care of me. He took care of me, guys. And tells us we not to be not for the pet. Wait, I'm sorry, start back. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. For the desolation that wasted at noonday. See, the desolation. We don't have to worry about when we go out of the air. I mean, come on. If we get shot, hey, after the body's present with the Amen. Lord. I mean, come on, you know. Amen. Think about it. And it says, a thousand, a thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand. But it shall not, wait, wait, it shall not come near me. Think about that. What power we've got in the name of Jesus. He us heaven. And, you know, we have power. We have power and authority in the name of Jesus. We need to pick it up. I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm talking to everybody else. We need to pick up that authority and take it. Like your wife's cancer. Go home and put your hands on her and say, Cancer, you rebuked the name of Jesus. Because remember, Jesus stood up when he hung on the cross and said, It is finished. And the stripes on his back for our healing. Of course, we don't know. Maybe God, maybe you know, maybe God wants these are in heaven. Maybe her time is, you know, we don't know. But you can still lay hands and pray, and you know, because I, I used to pray over my late husband too. But God needed him up there for some reason. You have a Christmas up there having a <laughs> Holy Ghost hold down, <laughs> you know. That's it. Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know. It says, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the rewards of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation, there shall no evil befall you, and no plague, no plague shall come near your dwelling. No plagues. But we got to go back to Solomon. Remember, Solomon was this great man with all this wisdom. There'd never be a man like Solomon with all the wisdom. But then he had to humble himself and pray. And true repentance is like turning. You know, I can say, oh, I'm sorry, and then I go back and do it again. That's not true repentance. That is not true repentance. We have to say, I'm sorry, and repent, and don't go back to it. And don't, and that is true repentance. You know. I'm always appalled if we could bring up the problem and Jesus was walking with the disciples today. And they said, What do you think about King Solomon? They said, What do you think about King Solomon? And I can't remember the verse and everything, but it sticks in my mind. He took a moment, looked down, and picked up one of his flowers. He said, you know, one of my flowers has more splendor glory than you will ever have. So you see, we don't need to put our our uh, thoughts in the end. We need to look at the glory. Amen. And uh, that's uh, that's what I'm reminded of when I hear people think of King Solomon and uh, all his splendor and all his glory. One of the lowest flowers has more than you'll ever have. So I just want to add that to the it's just kind of like an example. We take a look back 
and see what God did for that person, and he'll do it for us. To me, that's what I feel like. It's just kind of like an example. And it says, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear you. This is Jesus. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. That is Jesus. They held him up. You know, not long his bones were broken. And you shall tread upon the lions and the udders, and the young lions and the dragons, and shall not take the turn. Wait, come on, sorry. You shall tread upon lions and otters, and the young lions and the dragons shall you trample underfoot. You know, Satan, he, that's him. That's what he is. I don't want to give him no glory, so let's just drop him. But because you have set your love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, and I will send him on time because he knows my name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you know, then it says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. You know, I can kind of have a little, it's just a childish testimony this morning, but see, I got earrings, so it's got a little pretty classic thing on the back of it, you know, and it's kind of hard to see a little thing. And I just, I pray over everything. And I was praying, and I was looking on the floor, looking around, trying to find it, and I couldn't find it. And I just moved up along the, the counter, and there it was. That little thing, Jesus put that, kind of, I don't lose my earrings, because he knows, you know, that's just, you know. But little things like that. I mean, I could stand here all day and tell you how God has saved me from down the truck, how he's saved me at home, how he's, you know, just protected me all the time. And it says, with long life, with life, with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Long life. You know, I think about that long life. But then I'm thinking, because, you know, I don't know. But, but long life. But that's what he promises. You know, but repentance, what sticks in my mind. I just feel like we need to, re true repentance. You know, I know the White House will never do it unless, you know, God humbles them. But they need to start repenting. And we need to, you know, like I said, salvation starts at the house of God. And we need to have true repentance to go through this world. You know, true repentance. And I guess that's all I've got to share. Unless Lester wants to say some more. Or my brother here wants to say some more. I'll kind of hand over to them. And give them all. Okay. So, God. That's all i got to say. So, drivers be safe. And don't forget to stop here at the Road Angels Trucker Center. Exit 68, Interstate 70. You're home away from home. We love you, drivers. I saw all the signs. I saw all the signs. I saw all the signs. Right hey, it's right out there. You did great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing? Feel free to come in and, and, and worship by uh, taking communion anytime you want throughout the service. Today is a good day. Who's here Who's here ready to start to worship in the Lord? The Lord. I'm excited. I'm I tell you what, forget about what's happening around, okay, because today is the day of joy. We were praying back there, and all I could tell you is that today is going to be a joyful morning. You're starting off the, the day the best way ever. You're starting by coming in and worshiping the Lord, okay? So Pastor today, Lewis, this morning, yes, ma'am. Do you think there's any first-time guests here? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. And I know that there is. Crank the lights up, please. I want to see their faces. I'm just so excited to get going. Where's my first-time guest here? Can you lift your hands up really high? Look at this. We've got a couple here. I know they're all over the place. Right here, Mr. Nico. Anybody else? Keep your hand up really high. They're, they're hunting. <laughs> Yeah, because Bruce is going to give $100 bills to all the first-time guests, he said. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> hey, so meet the pastors after the service uh, behind the double doors in the Welcome Center. Uh, pastor Phil's going to take you out to lunch here at the Oasis. Amen. That's our senior pastor, you know, our brave warrior here. And, uh, and we got a little gift to give to you. Amen. So let's pray. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, because today... I'm excited, Lord, to be here in your house, Lord, just to be able to worship you, Lord, and just to forget about everything that's around, Lord, and just, just to focus on you, Lord. This morning, Father God, I just ask you, Father God, just to, to bring 
extreme joy, Lord. I just want you to show off like never before, Lord, and just bring such great joy to the house, Lord, like never before, Lord, because it's, it's your joy, Father God, that brings us strength, Father God, Lord. Lord, you, you are the air that we breathe, Father God, and I just ask you, Father God, just to consume us this morning, Lord, like never before, Lord. Oh, I just, I just speak peace, Lord. Peace and joy this morning, Lord. And we just love you. We give you thanks, Lord. And we just want to worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. How many of you are glad to be here this morning? I just wanted to say that I, I think that people who complain about church, I don't know that they know how good they have it. I remember there was a time where I was sitting over here and I was just watching a dance that was going on. There was a ministry piece happening. And I remember thinking about the things that God had brought me through in my life and, you know, times in my life where I was dealing with panic and all this kind of stuff, thinking that I wasn't going to make it. And one day, you know, I was sitting over there watching a ministry piece happening just about worshiping the Lord and I thought to myself, man, like... There was a time in my life where I didn't think I was going to make it, but here I am, alive. And I'm so glad to be here in the house of the Lord with people worshiping all around me freely. It's a really, really beautiful thing. We could be anywhere right now if the Lord didn't find us. We could be anywhere. We could be in the ground for all we know. But we're here. We're here for such a time as this. To give him an offering of praise and to, and to say our thanks for what he's done in our life. And I tell you that testimony because this morning we picked a lot of songs that deal with our testimony, what God has done in our lives. And I feel like in, in, in America especially, we're always focused on where we're going, the promise that lies ahead or manifest destiny or, you know, whatever our big dream is. And sometimes I think we can get so future focused that we forget just how far God has brought us and the amazing things that he's done in our life. So this morning, let's, let's set our hearts and, and make it our purpose to remember what he's done in our life and worship like he has saved us from something. Well, let's worship like we've gotten the best prize and the best gift that we could ever, because we have. Spoiler alert, you have. So can we do that this morning? Can you stand with me? We're going to sing this song. It's, it's an old song. It says, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I'll never let you go. Come on, bring me in there. Never let 
Until last year, until last year, did I have an encounter? I've sung this song a lot of times, but I'd never thought I'd realize that I'd understand what it meant until now. So don't forsake your time here. Enjoy every moment of worship you. I just want to show you. So 
song but I just want to say something too you know I grew up not feeling included but in the house of God and in the family of God there's a place for me and for you and so if you ever struggled with rejection or not feeling included welcome welcome to the family there's a place for you here there's a place for you. There's mamas and papas and sisters and brothers, and there's people for you to mentor as God heals your heart. So just know there's a God that loves you, and you can be a part of a family, and you're always invited to the party. <laughs>
you go before I know that you leave in God to win my own. Your love becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness. And all I did was.
And let us lift our hands before him today. So much better your way. All I had to do was praise you. All I had to do was worship. Oh, we exalt you, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. between you and God. Close your eyes, lift your hands between you and God. Oh, we love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I exalt you, O Lord. I'm just declaring over you right now that some of you in the midst of your battle, you're getting vision to see beyond it right now. See beyond it. God is with you through the battle. This too shall pass. This season's going to pass. You're going to have victory. You're an overcomer. By the blood of the Lamb, you're going to testify of the victory. Isn't it wonderful that we can draw close to God this way? The creator of the universe. He's not up in heaven somewhere. If you've received him in your heart, he's that close. But you can wake him up with your praise, with your worship. Wake up, Lord Jesus. Lead on as my commander in chief and as my rear guard. Oh, Father, we just yield ourselves to you today. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Pastor Sue and your leadership team is here with you to come up to the front. We're going to pray for youth camp. Stay standing with me right now, though. We want to pray first, I believe, for Surfside. You know, the churches are reaching out to the families of the victims over there. You know, this Wednesday, we took a moment of silence at 715 in our service, as they did at the, the pile of debris. There's 86 confirmed deaths now in the collapse of that building, I think about 43 still un, uh, unaccounted for. And there's so many grieving. But you know what? They're, they're, they're calling for God. They're calling upon the Lord for comfort. We want to stand in the gap for them right now. And Father, I just pray, Lord, right now that you'll just send the comfort of your spirit. Lord, let souls be saved. Lord, let people have a revelation of you. Let them have a revelation of their family and loved ones rejoicing around the throne. Lord, let them know that you are with them. And Lord, that nothing can separate them from you. I pray, Father, for the governor, for the mayors, for all the city leaders. Father, for those that are still working search and rescue. Lord, now that it's a recovery, Father, I pray, Lord, let, let them quickly find the, the, the people that are unaccounted for. Lord, I'm still praying for a miracle. Lord, a miracle. A miracle, oh God. And we thank you for the many testimonies of miracles. Father, we pray also for Haiti right now. Haiti's president was assassinated this week and the chaos that has ensued. Father, we pray for Pastor Benit and Bishop Joel and all the churches and leaders, Lord, that, that want to be uh, an answer vessel, Lord, in this time of chaos in Haiti. Father, we just pray for peace. We pray for peace. We pray for India. 
Lord, in that uh, second wave of coronavirus that's broken out, we pray for our churches, our leaders, oh God. We thank you for the miracles, Lord, that we've seen there as well in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for keeping the storm. We prayed last Sunday that God would push the storm away. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Wow, praise the Lord. Pastor Sue, we're going to pray for this youth camp starting tomorrow. You know what? The children's camp was on fire. And uh, God is doing something at a different level. So teenagers, fasten your seatbelts because we're going to see an awakening of God among these teens, 400 or so teenagers. Let's pray for them. Amen. Amen. And you know, a lot of these people that are up here have taken a week off of, um, off of work, taken a vacation week just to sow into the hearts of, and lives of teenagers. Amen. <laughs> Father, I just thank you so much for what you're going to do this week, God. Father, I just pray, God, that you would meet us in just an incredible way. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence in this room even now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way. I pray, God, that, that the spirit um, of homosexuality would be broken. The spirit of con gender confusion would be broken. The spirit of an anxiety would be broken off every life, lives of these teenagers, God. I come against right now, and I pray that you would break the back of that spirit of suicide right now in the name of Jesus. And I just pray, God, that you would move on this generation. God, I pray that you would pour your spirit in them. I pray, God, that your fire would hit them, God. And I thank you for that, what you're going to do, God. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to tell you, church, this is the craziest generation that's ever walked on this earth. But I'm going to tell you what, when they get a hold of God, they, they, they are so sold out. And I'm going to tell you something. God is going to do something amazing this week. Um, there are so many kids that are coming that their youth pastors have wrote notes um, on their registration forms. You know, this one's struggling with suicide. This one is struggling with major we have You would not believe the nurses' things that are filled out um, on the children that are coming this week that are, um, that, that are, are fallen victim to depression. I'm, I'm, talking, I, I'm talking hundreds. I'm not talking a handful. This is such a vital hour right now. And, you know, there's a lot of times, Pastor Phil, that, you know, we look at these camps and we're like, okay, you know, we want our church to grow. We want to pour into our youth group and our children's ministry. But we can't get away from these camps because, and it's a lot of work. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> we've been here till 2.30 in the morning most, most, almost every night this week. It's been crazy, but it's so worth it because we know what's going to happen. These altars are going to be so full of teenagers where they're going to have an encounter with God. We have a speaker that's speaking Tuesday night that's speaking on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know where she got baptized in the Holy Spirit? Why yet? Years and years and years ago. I'm telling you, it's, God does something in these camps. If you have teenagers that are not registered yet, listen, you don't want them to miss this moment. They're, I'm telling you, don't miss this moment for anything. If you have plans, cancel them. There's nothing more important than them to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Pastor Phil. Say one word. Uh, as, as adults and as uh, parents, we want to invest into our children. Amen? This is, these are your children. So invest in them in prayer, finances, whatever you can do. Keep them in prayer this whole week and the leaders too because they, they, they belong to you. You know, I'm so proud of this group up here because all of our children's camps and youth camps and now they're being taught that the speakers years ago came to the children's camp came to the youth camp many of these you know grew up Lord uh, here and now are pouring out uh, have ministries of their own and uh, just extend your hands to them father I pray let this be a time of refreshing for our youth leaders as well. Lord, not just them pouring out, but refresh them, renew them. Give them vision, give them revelation, dreams and visions. And Lord, let them go forth from here, ministered to. As they minister, let them go forth this week, ministered to as well, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You know what? Uh, you know, there's a cost factor, you can be seated. Uh, now, 
but not, not you. Stay up here a moment. Because um, a few weeks ago when we had our children's camp, you know, we said we had such a poor outpouring of local people that wanted to bring their kids. So we took them in under our wing. And many of them, you know, we just scholarship them the cost. And uh, many of you generously is paid for a, a sponsorship. And I think we sponsored about 40, about 40 kids, about $10,000 where thank you for your generosity. And so guess what? We have a chance to do that again. Do we have some envelopes? I got mine in the early service, but uh, it says Y-E-X on it. And uh, you can give this in addition to your tithe, okay? And uh, it's, uh, it's $275, but if you could just sew $100 or something, uh, but a full scholarship is $275. It pays for everything for the student for this week. Uh, I want you to just hold that uh, envelope in your hand, and, uh, and then we're going to receive our regular tithes and offerings here at the same time. But uh, what an investment. You know, what an investment, because this, this world is in chaos, and uh, our young people are particularly targeted. You know, they got gender confusion, you know, uh, they got confusion over what is truth, you know, and more than anything, they just need a touch from God. They need to sense and feel the presence of God. This altar will be packed full of kids every night. We have a morning general session. You know, they're playing all throughout the week, playing sports and competition. Outdoors, they're in the pool, they're in the river. But every morning, there's a general session every night, and they're getting closer to God. The first night, Monday night, they'll all get saved. And then the second night, they'll all get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The third night, they'll get delivered and set free from drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. And then when are we going to baptize the ones that Friday, Friday afternoon? We'll go dunk them in the muddy manatee, you know. So uh, we just want them to make a, uh, make a memory. You know, many of them go to church, but they just religiously practice their faith. When they come here for camp for five days and nights, they have an experience with God. Thank you so much, Pastor Sue, for your great vision and, and the leadership, all these guys that make it all happen. We thank you. We love you. Now you can be seated. We love you so much. You know, take that envelope. And I, I said uh, in the next, in the early service today that God gave me a word today and it's harvest. Harvest. I got up this morning and just meditating and, and prayer, and I just saw harvest, harvest. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel like we're sowing for that harvest. You know, it was amazing, uh, worship team. I heard just this morning that Pastor Jeanette, she let each of you that let a song, just pick your song based upon your testimony, because you know I'm going to preach on the power of your testimony today. But, you know, it just, it just moved me. I'm so proud of you because I've seen you all get victory and, and go through some difficult things. The enemy, Tiffany, the enemy tried to take you out. You know that, don't you? But now you're kicking them around with the authority and the power of God. Hallelujah. You just touched me, moved me. And same with you. Uh, you know, Jesse, you know, is like a son to me. But actually, this is my son back here. Stephen, you got to show this shirt. Uh, you know, not today, Satan, his shirt says. Woo! Not today, Satan. <laughs> so I, I just, you know, every one of you, I, I know something about your life. Jesse, God's using you in a mighty way in your music. The enemy tried to take you out. But you guys are pressing in like, like everybody is. And there's victory. There's victory. There's victory. But whatever it is, harvest in your life, Genesis 8.22 says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. You put something in the ground. It's not just talking about your money, but we were worshiping God with all of our might. You know, a lot of churches don't allow dancing in the church because, um, you know, the devil took dance and perverted it. But God had it first. <laughs> you know, and shouting and clapping. Man, when my little grandson comes over to my house, 
I love it when he's playful and excited and happy and joyful when he comes to my house. And I think God feels the same way. There's freedom. In the presence of the Lord, there's freedom. There's freedom. Where the presence of God is, there's liberty and freedom. Hallelujah. Let's sow as unto the Lord today and think about it as returning your love. Another way of worship. We sing worship, praise and worship with our fruit of our lips. And uh, today there's an opportunity to take something you've worked for and return it to the Lord, starting with your tithes, your offerings. You know, uh, we've been giving uh, heavily to our mission endeavors right now. I thank the Lord. Um, yesterday I got an uh, email or text or uh, WhatsApp. I'm not sure what it was, but from uh, Pastor Shravan. And uh, what we were working on and praying for for months has come through. He got a delivery, uh, the delivery of 24 uh, oxygen concentrators. They're, they're like uh, ventilators that they use in 24 of them. These are high-cost items. Thank the Lord for that because all of our churches there, you know, they're setting up places to take people in. There was another wave of coronavirus virus breakout there, and it's really been devastating. And our churches are, are filling the gap because there's, there's not any hospitals that are taking people in. They don't take them in if they've got the virus. So guess what? We're setting up beds in churches to minister to people. And now we got 24 of these uh, oxygen ventilators. Thank God. Thank God. And so we just want to be a blessing. Uh, Pastor Benit said that they got starting a new school year. They need books for the students. And... Uh, there's so many needs. Every time you sow, remember that you're given to a worldwide vision. You have a part in this, and only eternity will show, you know, the, the fruit that comes from your sowing. Father, I pray a blessing. And by the way, put harvest on the flap of your envelope. That's what I did on mine. Put harvest, harvest, harvest. Praise the Lord. And then uh, believe for what you're what you're sowing for in Jesus' name. Harvest, harvest. Can't find that, that envelope. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Father, I do pray that those that are struggling in any area right now, Father, that you would give them vision to see beyond that struggle and see the victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pray a blessing now, Father. Upon this as we give it out of love to you in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen hallelujah hallelujah you know uh, I think for the sake of time I'm gonna just uh, you know I can't find my envelope Jesse so maybe it's my Bible or something for my here it is for YEX um, you know it's funny uh, we've got somebody special here. I just want to introduce Pastor Eugene and Clara Weaver. If you just stand and wave at us so people know what you look like. I just want to honor this man of God. He pastors Harvest Fellowship. That just came to my mind right now. Harvest Fellowship in Stevens, Pennsylvania. Uh, and the God gave me the word harvest this morning. And here that's the name of your church, Pastor. But he's also president of the ministerial fellowship that my father started, GCMF, which is now Global Christian Ministries Forum, a network of churches and ministries and missions all over the world. And uh, dad, that was 15 years ago. The first magazine we published, a charismatic magazine was called Harvest Time, dad says. But uh, you know what, uh, Pastor Eugene and Clara, you came through the Institute of Ministry here at Christian Retreat too in 1988. Isn't I right on, right on that? I thought I had that down. And then uh, for the last 15 years has been the president, apostle, leader of the ministerial fellowship, the network of ministers. We so honor you and thank you for stopping in they're vacationing in Bradenton, you know, so uh, uh, Bradenton's a good place to come, right? Especially Christian retreat. 
And uh, we just honor you and pray you get that R and R and go back more fired up. But thanks so much for stopping in and saying hello to us. Thank you, worship team. I think I'm gonna preach. You better preach now, Pastor. I better preach. You better preach. I better preach. You better preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm gonna start out. I want to show you a little clip here um, that was uh, put together for our our youth camps. If you can give me my PowerPoint. I've been preaching on the new normal, and uh, I've been saying that everybody's talking about the new normal after the pandemic. I want to talk about the new normal for the church after the pandemic, because especially the church, the last day's remnant church, it's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I want you to understand that the world today is looking for you. They're looking for a demonstration, a testimony, a witness of a living God that's at work on planet Earth. A God they cannot see with their eyes, but they can see you. And so, you know what God's doing? And this is the new normal in the church. He's giving you a testimony. And there's no moany without a, a test. <laughs> you know that word moany in the, the, the word testimony? It, it, it's, you know, the word ceremony. It, it's like an event. A test is like an event in your life and dependent on how you handle it it can become a testimony that god can use to touch and to bless others i want you to think about that because jesus said you shall receive power after the holy ghost comes upon you and this is not earthly power this is spiritual power this is power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and you don't have to be a preacher a, a teacher a prophet or evangelist God wants to specialize in using the least likely people. And, you know, many times people that have a need, they're, they're not uh, afraid of somebody that they relate to. A pastor, somebody with a collar, you know, they might be afraid. But God's going to put somebody in your path so that you can talk about that power. How and when God healed you, how God set you free. And uh, you'll be a witness. He said, you'll be witnesses unto me. And I want you to know that's what we're pouring into these teenagers when they come tomorrow and here for five days and nights. And uh, we're going to be raising them up and sending them. Um, on the little video clip that you saw in the video announcements, you showed a lot of the outdoor events. I want to show you a little bit about what goes on here around the altar. I'm saying goodbye to every limit. This song says there's no limit. He's limitless. God is limitless. Hello to the God Young people need to hear that. Prepared is our theme. A generation no made ready. We're preparing them to send them, train them and send them. So there are no limits. There's no limits with you. You're limitless. You. Come on, sing it out. You know, sing you limitless. So you're limitless. I submit to you today that God predetermined before each and every one of you got your hands dealt in life that you would be a symbol of limitless potential. It doesn't matter the cards that you've been dealt. You know the card dealer. Hallelujah. You know the one who holds them all. He holds all the cards. <laughs> Brother Town. bowed and every eye closed if you're away from God if you've been that person who's just got the t-shirt but you're never going all in I need you to make a decision today yes or no Adam will you go all in for the Lord I don't want you to walk out here and think well I can really do what I want to do because God's gonna forgive me oh yes he most definitely will forgive you but you will pay a price yes. Lord Jesus here in the company of my friends and in this holy assembly once again I'm going all in. Going all in. I like that. <laughs> it's high energy. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And the seat that you're sitting in has been anointed, has been prayed over.
I want this message to impact you as well. The fact that you need to go all in. That's the new normal. Not just to sit and wait for God to do something, but to act on what you already know. Romans 8 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. But Romans 8, 19, it says, All of creation is waiting in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed or be manifested on planet Earth. And, and, and it even says there's a groaning going on in people because they know there must be more. There must be a God. How do you think God's going to manifest himself on this earth? Through us. Through us. And I want to declare that this is the season. This is the new normal after the pandemic. The Bible says the church is getting, I mean, the, the, the world's getting darker. So I want to declare the church is getting brighter. And the light of God's presence is coming forth in you. You know, um, the Surfside collapse uh, last week, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was hearing uh, the commentators and the, the city officials uh, calling on help for prayer. They said, we have everything we need. Uh, and more. They have all the equipment, all the money that came in. We got everything we need. What we need now is prayer. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> they said, and we need miracles. We need a church. We need a people of God that believe in miracles. And listen, all of creation, the way this world has gotten so chaotic, all of creation is looking for that as well. You know, we saw... A couple teams from here go over to Surfside and minister to people on the streets. And I was just so blessed to hear, Bruce, uh, you and Billy and your team were able to get into the restricted area. You know, when people know that you're serious about coming to pray, you know, you can get in. I remember when we got in, uh, when the Trade Center Towers came down at Ground Zero in New York City. And uh, we, we came to pray. Uh, there were other people there for search and rescue and all, but uh, we came to pray. And they said, go on in. Uh, the, the world values a people that know who they are with the boldness, the courage, and the authority to pray and to connect people to God. Church, I believe we're in that season, and it's probably not going to get better. So I want to challenge you today to be looking about what God's already done for you and what he's going to do to make you a testimony here in the world today. By the way, the teams reported to me when they were out to Surfside, they prayed for 46 people, 35 salvations, including six Jewish people. There were a lot of Jewish people in that that came to know Jesus as Messiah. They prayed for 10 police officers, uh, 10 fire, fire.